So let's start. Um, welcome all of you to a rather interesting talk. This is life lessons from an engineer, but not just any engineer, a spiritual engineer. So you, some of you may be wondering what does that term even mean? Uh, but then no better person than uh, Dr. Anil Rajvongsi to tell us about what does a spiritual engineer mean. Um, he's very well, uh, well known. He also was awarded the Padma Sri in 2022. But uh, it is, um, let me just still read a very, very short biography of him. So he did his bachelor's and master's degrees in mechanical engineering from IIT Kanpur. So he's an alumnus. And his PhD was in uh, University of Florida, uh, USA. Now, after receiving his PhD, um, he taught there for about two and a half years and then did something that, uh, according to his own um, uh, words, that young men of his age and education rarely did those days. And I can add, it is still rare in these days as well. So what he did is he came back to India in 1981 to apply his training for developing rural India. So he established then the energy and sustainable development work at this Nimkar Agricultural Research Institute uh, at Maharashtra, Nadi. See, he runs this NGO. Um, and so essentially the work of this NGO is to do research and development in renewable energy, rural and sustainable development. And that is what he's best known for his work. And uh, of course, for this work, he has won several uh, prestigious national and international awards. I've already told you about the Padma Sri Award. He also won the Distinguished Alumnus Award from IIT Ka Kanpur. And in uh, 2014, he became the first Indian to receive the Distinguished Alumnus Award from this University of Florida. Um, apart from doing his uh, work, he is also a prolific writer. He has his own blog. He writes a lot. And uh, he has a passion for writing articles on the interplay of spirituality and holistic development and has published more than 200 articles in various newspapers, news lines. This includes Times of India, Huffington Post, Thrive Global, South Asia Minor, etc. So um, his passion really is to teach youngsters and therefore he travels all over India and gives inspirational lectures. Um, we, are, we are proud, we are gl uh, glad to see him at IIT Kanpur. Um, well, he has visited here uh, earlier as well. This is alumnus, but uh, Nevertheless, this is uh, going to be a very uh, interesting talk today. So, Dr. Rajvangshi, please. Thank you. Good evening. I wish uh, there would have been many more, uh, whether it was not publicized enough or else people are busy in their own work. Because uh, it is for you young people that this talk is about and uh, I wish naturally it is being recorded and I'll put it on the my YouTube and we'll share with you all and I'm sure the publicity uh, cell of IIT Kanpur will also share it with you. Now before I start I must uh, thank I would like to thank Dr. Ganesh. Uh, the acting director who very kindly invited me and uh, I would like to thank Dr. Arnab who did the logistics part but I would really like to thank my dear friend Dr. Kantesh Balani who is the dean of DORA for a lot of things to smoothen out my coming here. Now, I, when I thought of right, uh, talking about this, I just wondered why would uh, you young, first of all, are you M-Tech, B-Tech, PhD? Huh, yeah. What, B-Tech? How many B-Tech? How many M-Tech? So B-Techs are quite a lot. So why this lecture? Why would anybody be interested in knowing about my life, old fogey, because you know I give lectures all over the country and people always ask me why you did it and as you will see it was, this is a very interesting journey uh, and it is a very different thing and I thought that since this is my alma mater 
I would like to share with the young students why I did that. And I'm not unique. I hope that some of you can be inspired by this journey and do it yourself. You may not follow what I did, but it's a philosophy that I'm going to talk about is what you should be looking at. And whatever you do, you use that philosophy that I have done in my life. And that is probably the essence of my talk. So wanted to share my story and journey for its uniqueness and to inspire youngsters like you. You can help make this country great and be attached to the story of India. One of the reasons why I came back from the United States in 81, when the whole India was going to the United States, I was a rising star on a track towards getting the uh, tenured faculty position in so many places. I was auto offered position. There was a genuine, there was a passion, there was a madness. He let me go back to India and see what I can do with my knowledge that I had gained. And it was a very different thing because all my classmates, and in fact, most of the Silicon Valley is owned by my, or they are big honchos in Silicon Valley were my, are my classmates. One of them is Narayan Murthy, and actually he's here. So these are the things, you know, all these people I went and talked. I said, Chalo, we are, I'm going. They all wanted to um, uh, also come back, but then the wise, said he will not get this, he will not get that. And so this is all, the whole thing was, the quality of life that they were talking about was not suitable to them at the time. Now, what is this story of India? Can anybody define what is the story of India? Yeah. great spiritual and ethical traditions and philosophical thought that India has given to the world from time to time. That is the essence. And this essence, if you know, if you study, and as I'll show you that I was exposed to this from my early childhood, and that caught hold of me, and somehow it remained at the back of the mind that this is where I belong. This is what I should do, and this is how I can make a difference. But I was very fool because India is a very ancient society, and you cannot change the society. Even great people like Gandhi and others could not do. But you had this arrogance, and that arrogance is what brought me back. So if you get inspired, then follow the philosophy behind this journey and chart your own course. It's very difficult to compress 65 years of my life that I'm talking about starting from IIT Kanpur in 67, in just 40 odd minutes, but I'll try. And I hope you will get a sense of it. When all of us help to improve the lives of the rural population through technology, and that is the key word, through technology, not by anything else, but through technology, then this country can become great and in the process, show the world a new paradigm of development. Because development can take place through the technology and there are large number of developing countries in the world who can learn from our example and we are you know we call ourselves or we are trying to become Vishwaguru but Vishwaguru can only happen when young bright students like you help in this development process if you run away from this country then nobody will help this country and most of, the, or most of you would like to go abroad. In fact, today, the young students are going everywhere except here, whether it's Australia, Canada, here, there. And this is a sad part because if you will not make this country great, nobody will do. And it is your duty and your, uh, you know, basically responsibility to do that. My early life, I was born and raised in Lucknow in 1950s, 
went to a very famous school called St. Francis. How many of you have heard about St. Francis? St. Francis School is a very well-known school in Lucknow. Huh? No, 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 it's in Lucknow. And uh, there used to be two major schools, Lucknow, um, uh, St. Francis and uh, La Martinier. And uh, St. Francis was better because maximum number of students from St. Francis got into IIT Kanpur. And uh, so we all of us um, applied. And in fact, in my batch, around seven of us got into IIT Kanpur in those times, nine of us in those times. Uh, was exposed to the spiritual and intellectual traditions of India, influence of my father who went to jail with Gandhiji in 42 movement. And that is what made him give me a lot of books on the old traditions of India, the uh, great uh, uh, tales, Gandhiji's uh, autobiography, etc. Now, why I'm telling you all this is that what are the influences? And those influences are the most important thing because whatever you are, is by the age of 16, your personality is made. And that age of 16, when you enter into IIT Kanpur, if you are not exposed to this, if you are not learned, it's not that you have to finish, but there is a mechanism by which you can really go into these things and understand and learn these things. Read extensively books on Gandhiji's autobiography, Indian classics, Panchatant, Patanjali Yoga, there was an excellent library in Lucknow, and I should go and uh, visit the, that library and uh, take all these books. And there was a great desire to just learn. There was a great desire to read, be a part of what happened, you know, understand the history of India. And I think that is what is missing. How many of you have read Panchatant? Original? Huh? Very good. Very few. You are a pro professor. I am talking about a student. Because you know, it's amazing how some of these very ancient books have a tremendous value in the present world. And that is what uh, I'm going to discuss, that whatever I did will have implications in the present world, in the present circumstances. And that is what you should be looking at. Helped me on the path of spirituality. Started meditating, did a lot of uh, uh, learning, help in, in, in uh, concentration and help me at, get attached to the story of India. I just became very much inspired by what Gandhiji did, how we got independence. So many, you know, in our history book, in uh, St. Francis, we had this uh, history of the independence movement, and it was really inspiring. And this is what really kept, was in, got into my mind. And I, when I went to the United States, and even after I had a very good career, this thought always was there, that we, I am a part of that society and I should go back and try to help. You should read this, my book. I have written a book on this. This is early life and you may get inspired by that. I always wanted to be an engineer. When I was small, I used to take things apart. I was very fascinated by steam engines, so I was always wanted to be an engineer. When you want to be an engineer, then the only thing was, to go into some of the best schools, and IIT Kanpur was at that time number one institute of India. And so the idea was to appear for the JE and uh, get into IIT. My JE was 29. I studied very hard. There was no, um, uh, in those times, uh, uh, coaching classes. Uh, there was one coaching class in Delhi. My parents could not afford. So the, my friends would go there, and they would come and back and tell me how great that coaching class was. So I used to get very upset, so I would study even further. And the books that were being taught in IIT Kanpur, I would bring, uh, take it from the library and read them. And that is what, in fact, I taught from Lucknow. And that was the reason why one could do things. So you, do, you don't have to do all these things. You just And in those times, the JE was more focused on what you know, not the uh, passing exam technology that you have today from the quota and etc. And that was a very interesting thing. I have very happy memories of my IIT K day. In fact, I have written a very, very big blog. It is very famous. A lot of IITians all over the world read it. And I would uh, suggest that you should read it. IIT Kanpur at the time was an institute in making. There were only few um, uh, um, 
buildings here it was very dry very hot but there was very interesting time there was no internet etc and used to have a huge bull session discussing about everything in the world and especially about where the country is going the uh, involvement of america in uh, vietnam all sort of things but very very do you know uh, 16 17 18 year old kids how much they know but this great discussion this great intellectual today i believe that the most of the students are sitting in their office, in their rooms and uh, um, uh, on the net and etc have a discussion have an interaction and their interaction and discussion helps tremendously in making the brain better and also in socializing the so suicides happen because you don't socialize in our times just when i was um, uh, passing out in 74 uh, there was one suicide the first suicide but otherwise the, the exams were tough as they are right now in fact even more tougher because there was nothing else but the main thing was this interaction so whatever i am today is because of iit kvg session i really feel that i was very much involved in not only my studies but in also the humanities i took nine courses in fact that is something which is i think missing in present iit system that the number of humanities courses have been reduced i used to ace all of them and humanities is what gives you a well rounded personality and that is what and if you, even if you are not taught if there are no courses go and attend the courses take uh, audits read iit kanpur still has a very good library the main thing is is that you have to absorb nobody is going to come and open your mouth and give the information you have to absorb and iit kanpur is a great institution there are so many things i i am very much sure that none of you have ever gone and see, visited the lab know what is happening in this institute how many of you have gone really and visited all the labs you don't even know where the labs exist because you are all the time sitting there and um, doing your sms and uh, uh, on the uh, you know uh, your uh, um, um, media whatever it is so you go and see and you learn and that expansion of the brain is what will make you a better person not by sitting and sending sms and whatsapp and etc that is a totally waste of time so it's a great institution please soak up the knowledge while you are here read extensively especially the classic literature it will help you become a well rounded personality i'm just telling you this because this is what i got from this institute this is what the forces which made me what i am today and these forces i think were there on others also and i must tell you that during our time in all iits there were a lot of people who became leaders and those leadership came because of this interaction this other things besides your study wherever you will go you will study you you will uh, learn etc but it is this ethics this desire to work is what is most important thing and if you are unethical then you will not be able to achieve anything because you will be screwing yourself first and then others what you need is to have an ethics and good attitude and aptitude a working responsibility from here you know in those times everybody used to go to united states i also went to united states got a government of india scholarship this was very prestigious fellowship 50 were given every year where everything was taken care of the air passage the uh, books the all the fees and this is very handsome fellowship and uh, i was one of the very very few actually who got this fellowship who came back most of the indians got this fellowship they repaid this was you know people could repay because the dollar and rupee parity and they felt very happy because their conscience was uh, clear which was not the correct thing because government of india gave you money to go and study and come back and use it and uh, i went to do phd under a very famous man called eric farber he was a dada of energy in fact he besides his solar energy work he also got the is award for from nasa for the saturn 5 rocket the liquid propellant rocket uh, he had a major part to play and because of that i had a great satisfaction of meeting the father of in modern rocket von braun 
you must have heard about von Braun. I met him. He was the one who designed the rocket for Hitler. And so, great intellectual, uh, uh, you know, atmosphere in the universities in those times. And I imbibed all that. Tremendous desire to gain knowledge. I had a lot of eclectic interests. Besides my mechanical engineering, I took courses in psychology, physics. You know, one of the beauty of the Government of India's fellowship was I could take as many courses as possible. People were very focused, you know, when you go get a scholarship from the uh, university, then the professor will tell you, you work only, only in this. You take courses only on that and that, that's all. So there were my uh, friends who had three, four years, PhD, three years PhD, some uh, courses, papers and out. I was very lucky in, uh, with this fellowship and the desire to learn. And my professor was very renowned, so he never interfered because he valued the scholarship. And that, to my mind, is a very important thing. And that those type of professors are everywhere. You have to find out. You have to look at even IITs, etc. Nobody will come and give you by opening your mouth. You have to find out. And if you go and interact with them, then you will learn a lot. The reason why I'm telling you this is that this desire to learn is what sometimes I find missing in the young person. And that is not a very good thing. Because all the time, if you are thinking about money, if you are thinking about your career, you see, career and money will come. If you have your intellectual capital, then the career, money, everything will come. If you are only looking at money and career, then coming to IIT was the wrong thing. You should have taken a bank job. And the better thing would have been to become an expert at decoit. So you take care of ATMs and other things, and you will earn much more money. And even more than that, you become a politician, and that is even better. So there was a tremendous thirst, thirst for knowledge. Living only good life, somehow did not get into the vision field. Lived in cheapest dorms, no AC, and drove a second-hand car. You know, when I, 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 you, you should read my book, 1970s America, an Indian student's journey. I think so. so all my things are available free on the net. I made it available free because I want the youngsters to read that. That there is something more to life than simply looking about your career and your money. And when you become focused and have a genuine for learning, then it gives you a tremendous high. And even at this age, it's my 74, I enjoy learning. I enjoy interacting. That's the reason why I come. Otherwise, there's no need for me to come. I enjoy interacting with the youngsters. And I wish there would have been many more so that I would have interacted. And tomorrow I'm here, and I would like to interact. Uh, send the message to your um, uh, friends. If they're not, not uh, involved in integrity, they can come to the guest house. And I would love to interact. Seven years stayed at the University of Florida. Four and a half years I got my PhD and two and a half years I taught. It was one of the happiest moments, years of my life. No pressure of anything, just the knowledge. In fact, I was getting whatever money, you know, by, you know by, uh, as a professor, there were a lot of people who used to go to the head of department that we need more increment, etc. He used to always tell that Anil never comes to me. Because I always thought that, that, that what I was getting was enough. I was living in a very simple housing. We both were married. Uh, I met my wife in uh, University of Florida. She was also doing a PhD. And so it was a very interesting time. The whole focus was how to learn and then try to see if something can be done by going back. So this is the URL of my book, 1970s America. And I hope you read and be inspired. So in 1981, I returned to rural Mahalaya. Going from Lucknow to IIT Kanpur to University of Florida, one of the very good leading universities. Now it's number five in the top universities of public universities. And uh, even at the time, the engineering, etc., was very good. And suddenly, coming to rural Maharaj, in a place called Fulton, from where even when I had to make a phone call, I would hop on the bus, go to Pune four hours, and make phone calls. And there was a janoon, there was a passion. There was just the madness that if I, I want to do something, and when you have that genuine madness, it really catches hold of your brain. All the pinpricks go away. 
you don't think about other things but about what you want to do in life i never asked you know when i came back there were quite a number of the staff members in my in our institute and they used to always say you know this is a very small place small institute where what will happen to me i said i don't give a damn about it i am working and i never cared about it. and slowly slowly things happen when you do interesting and good work people come to know about it and they start knowing ki what is happening we should help etc etc all the awards came you know in fact my classmates they all thought it i was a fool coming back to rural maharashtra you know, with no money etc because they were making huge amount of money and now they say that you had the best life when you are the most decorated member of our class to them the decorations make, make a lot of difference i it doesn't bother the bother me just you should be happy in whatever you are doing and if you are happy whatever you do is your choice your calling but whatever you do you do with passion and happiness and excellence and things will happen and this is the fear that i see in lot of youngsters they are all the time fearful they are all the time looking for money because what will happen then what will happen here you know you are starting your career at the age of 20 21 the fear of the world you're starting your career with a huge amount of baggage and you will burn out and this is what happens people burn out very rapidly they are all the time thinking about the fear about the things which you should not think rather than being focused on the work that you should be doing and that is what is you should this is a philosophy that i would like to tell and this is one of the lessons of my life did not bring anything after staying for 7 years in the uh, united states no refrigerator car in fact at the customs the man customer uh, the uh, customs uh, you know commissioner he got very upset because i brought all my books in the boxes which were johnny walker shivas regal because these boxes were available and he kept on thinking that why would any idiot bring one and a half tons material and nothing in this in these boxes so i had a very long list of each and every box labeled properly i gave him the whole file i said you can look at it if you find one bottle you take the whole thing and after uh, maybe 4 5 hours he said i have never seen a more stupid person in my life that after 7 years you never brought anything people bring cars people bring you know because 7 years was a very long time and in those times to bring i said but everything is available here and why do i bring things which i may or may not need in survive Fulton was a place where you could not even get a cup. You had to go to Pune to get a cup. But so what? Because these things did not matter that much. If you think about these things, then you you are you are being a very ordinary person. This lecture is for people who want to do something else in their life. This lecture is for people who inspire to be wonderful. And from IIT Kanpur, I believe and I hope. that you will be the leaders in this world and this is what uh, i am trying to tell you i had many jobs offers and prestigious institutions both in us and india bell labs you must have heard about bell labs bell labs offered me because one of the uh, my professor's former student was a big honcho in bell labs he said immediately here is a job then seri solar energy research institute was just starting and uh, the director deputy director got very fond of me he even showed me the parking spot he says this is a parking spot but there was a just genuine i told him i said i am going back he says why are you going back you are one of the uh, you have done work you been one of the leaders of solar energy and you should be working here i said no i am going back then green card i was offered in one second because jimmy carter's national security council person was a leader he was the one who was looking after our program he came and sat for 4 hours in my office he says you are committing a harakari you are going back he says green card is here i'll just phone up and you get a green card i said i don't need a green card he says i'll do a fast uh, thing in the citizenship so i said i don't need that so the university because i was in the faculty the university sent me to the immigration office you know this is a strange man you are trying to get him a green card he does not want so i 
finally told them, I said, you just give me what is the best visa and no green card. That was just uh, my madness. Because I felt that if I get a green card or this, I'll then remain in America. I always wanted that I should not be attached. This was my madness. Then in India, I was a full professor. I was doing a full faculty position in IIT Bombay. I didn't want to be in IITs because I had seen the system in IITs. I said, I'll do my work. Then Darbari said, how many of you have heard about Darbari said? Huh? Darbari said, Darbari said, GRD Tata, Rusi Modi, they were the biggest honchos of Tata. In fact, all Tatas was run by some of these people. So Darbari said got a tremendous liking for me. He invited me. He says, here is a big job for you, the directorship of Tata Energy Research Institute. So I said, no, I'm going to the rural Maharaj to help me there. So it was, you know, you read that in my book. It's a very interesting story. Tata Chemical. Tata Chemical. Yeah. So just read that because, you know, it was, this is the genuine. Because if you want to do something different, you have to have a genuine. Because if you are all the time differing, no, 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 let me see if I can get more money, more um, things from Tata's, more this, you will not have to do it. Just do it. And totally ill prepared, always jump first and then think where you have landed. If you think too much beforehand, then you will not take the risk. You should all be bank managers. If you want to do something wonderful in your life, take risk. And taking risk is the most important thing. All the time you talk about startup, but you do not know a damn thing about startup. And startup is really risk taking. But you do not know, and that is why the startups fail because you just want, um, you'll take a lot, get a lot of money, you uh, spend it on your um, yourself, and that's the end of it. So that is something which you should be looking at. So initial hiccups were very much six months. Being in Fulton, I got this tremendous uh, um, doubt whether I have taken the right decision. I got this land, the throwaway price. This was right in totally barren jungle. We used to have jackals today. Still today, we have a lot of uh, snakes. Uh, occasional wolf came. There were, there were um, uh, panthers a couple of year, uh, months back. But we just built a house. And it was very easy to uh, and cheap to build a house. Nobody would come to um, work in our place because it was very isolated. But after 30, 40 years, it's a really beautiful jungle. Because we just grew trees, my wife planted trees, and we left the nature take care of. And this is what gives you tremendous satisfaction. You see the things growing and becoming something which you, and everybody used to laugh. Why are you growing trees? You should be um, um, planting and should be making money out of uh, farming. But you grew trees. And all this is, uh, you see that. Never look back. Staying in a lonely place without any fear. Fear is the main thing. If you have fear, then you will not do things that I did. And I believe that in whatever you do, if you do it with fearlessness, and you will do wonderful things in life. You are you run away to other countries because you have fear. Nothing will happen in this country. Why? Have you stayed in this country long enough? Have you done work in this country? Have you done things that you want to do? Because you have all the time fear. And it is the fearlessness which will give you this power to do something wonderful. And that is the lesson that I have learned and I would like to tell you that this is something that you should imbibe. The biggest lesson, become fearless. Do internal introspection to remove fear. Don't listen to other people. My father, when I came back, he thought that I was the biggest fool. You know, he said, I sent you to best schools, this, etc. He didn't send, but that is what he claimed. And now you have you are spoiling your life by going and uh, staying in this rural um, full of a place. That is something that you should never listen. I always listened to my inner voice and did. And that I could do it because of the fact 
that I was fearless, or at least I had very little fear. And if you all the time thinking and fearing, fearing, you'll never take that plunge. Fearlessness removes insecurity and greed and is the engine of doing interesting work and thinking deeply about issues. In fact, I have met uh, some of the people whom you hear in the, read in the textbooks. The father of hydrogen bomb was my colleague in the University of Florida. Have you heard about Stanley Ulam, the great mathematician? So I used to ask him, I said, what made you go into, uh, he was one of the leading figures in the Manhattan Project. He says, the desire to learn, desire to know what is happening. I said, did you think about uh, how it will be used? He says, we never thought about that. It was just the desire to go into the unknown and that could happen when you are fearless. If you all, all the time thought about fear, you know, this will kill so many people, that was, that happened. But the question was is, they were going in a totally uncharted uh, territory and the focus was, how do we do this? What does nature tell us? It's a very remarkable story. If you read, in fact, the people that you, you must have seen some of this open eye movie. I knew a lot of people personally. And that is a very, in fact, that movie was all horrible. There were so many things happening behind the scene, which made it so interesting. And the life at that time, so hard. When they worked in Manhattan Project in um, uh, that God forsaken place in the uh, Mexico, New Mexico, very hard life. But they did it day and night. That is what Janoon and passion does. If you want to do something interesting and different in life, then be a mad person like me. So welcome to the club of madness. If you want to just have, always have a soft life, always um, uh, feel comfortable, you know, the comfort zone, then you'll never do anything. You'll do you. Madam, Madam, Madam uh, brought me back to Fulton. So that is, we both, you see, no, no, we both wanted to come, but we did not know where we'll go. There were always plus and minuses. I thought that if I have something of my own, then I have a total freedom. No matter, no matter it was, what it was. And I'll tell you a very interesting thing. When I came, you know, because our parents knew Kiloskar, Kiloskar, SL Kiloskar. SL Kilo, in those times, SL Kiloskar and GRD Rata were the only two people in India who had their own personal plane. Uh, every Tom, Dick and Harry has a plane. So I went to SL Kiloskar and I said, oh, please lay the foundation stone of my lap. So he sent his driver, driver means pilot. So he went, circle, took the photograph. He said, there's nothing. I said, that is exactly what I want you to come and lay the foundation stone. And uh, uh, he was very unhappy. He says, you know, you join my organization. A person like you should uh, be doing something. I said, no. So this is the things that went. It's a very interesting thing. You, if you read my life, uh, 1970s America, you read all that. We did a lot of very interesting work. And some of you may have known about the e-rickshaws. It came from us. The whole biomass program of India came from us. You know, I'm just telling you that in a very small, this very little resources, you can do wonderful things if you put your mind, focus, and have a genome. And you know, in a, a place like that, where you did not even think about setting up plants and etc., we set, we set it up. And there was a deputy director of NCL. He says, what you have done in seven months, I could not do in seven years in NCL. Because there was just this genuine, continuously we used to work and we used to do things. Because the idea was to find out what, what is possible. So when I came, this is uh, the lantern because the electricity situation was very bad in Poland. So from coming from America, etc., and then you come and start reading in the lantern. So as a mechanical engineer, I started thinking, you know, this thing has not changed in the last 120 years. What can be done? to improve the quality of light. And we were probably the first people, um, group which really uh, did a lot of very major work on improving the quality of light from a lantern. And when we did that, then I started thinking about why use kerosene? Because 80% of kerosene in those times was being imported from Russia. Why can't we grow our own fuel? 
and that may put me on the path of developing ethanol from sweet sorghum and we pioneered today there are large program in this country producing ethanol from sweet sorghum and we pioneered that you can read all that in the uh, our site and other other places what i am trying to tell you is that all these things because the problems are right in front of you if you keep on thinking you know somebody will come and give you the problem that will never happen if you see the problem try to solve it and use your science and technology so we set up the first pilot plant in the world of using solar energy to distill ethanol it was very interesting in 87 i went to germany to present our work the germans could not believe they said in a rural maharashtra you put this plant which was producing 50 liters of pure 95% ethanol so they were still working with the uh, test tube one can do a lot of very interesting things and you know when you read that you uh, there's a famous book i have written romance of innovation all the work that we did in renewable energy and this is again freely available read that what forces what things happened and how we were able to take it by going to the fundamentals of engineering by not having enough machines and enough uh, um, uh, equipment but thinking fundamentally so by doing simple simple experiments you were able to get very good data then you had to analyze it and get very good answers this institute was started by nandini's father in 1968 again as a uh, you know a need he saw that there were not enough uh, good institutes to do uh, research and development in seed production so he set this up that we should be able to do r&d in seed production and uh, try to help the farmers we do engineering and science for development very little focus on social issue when i came back i said to myself if gandhi could not solve the problems of this country who am i so i should stick to my technology and that is what we have done tackle local problems of environment and energy and so one was the lantern other was western maharashtra is a sugar cane growing area large amount of sugar cane is grown it is harvested the leaves are left behind and the farmers put the fire to it because it's a disposable problem this is 1981 82 i said you know what a waste of energy it pull was polluting everything so that is how the national biomass program that we developed that every taluka we should have we have enough agriculture residues i should be able to produce all the electricity the government of india ran that program for a very long time in fact today even today all the talukas or the country have been mapped their biomass potential and this came from our study in 1990 and uh, around 10000 megawatt power plants have been put based upon that and then we also set up a half a megawatt thermal gasifier this was also a very unique gasifier where iits and iics could not do it and we did because we just kept on working on it is a focus is a junoon you have to continuously keep on solving small small problems and you can achieve anything you want and if you solve one problem and go and sit for 3 days in coffee cafe day nothing will happen and we continuously kept on working is genuine a lot of people would leave me but there, there was a genuine and finally the last one that you see is the e rickshaw 1995 when i started this nobody in the world knew about e rickshaws i am a mechanical engineer but i come from lucknow and i said we need to have something by which i can reduce the drudgery of the rickshaw pullers and we embark on this program and we develop the e rickshaw the first e rickshaw in the country or in probably anywhere and then to copy the next etc so these are the things small small things which one can do if you put your mind and your uh, spirituality work help me in retaining sanity all these genuine or passion was the drive if things were not working i would go back to my spirituality read write and i write a lot of it so some impact of our work 10000 megawatt biomass based power plant set up in india biomass resource mapping for taluka pioneered the use of sweet sorghum for ethanol and syrup production in india many organizations in india are doing it 
pioneered the use of ethanol as a household cooking and lighting fuel. We were the first people to do that. We developed lanterns, we developed stoves, but government of India does not allow you to do that because we have very stringent excise laws. So now it is being taken up in dozen countries in Latin America and in Africa. In fact, seven, eight years ago, there was a very major conference in Delhi, cooking energy. And there was a whole section on ethanol cooking lighting. And I, I didn't put, present anything. And I was very surprised when the delegate said, here is the father of the ethanol cooking. So obviously, slowly, slowly, people understand and uh, know what is possible. E-Rikshas concept came from an NARI in 1990s. Then the most interesting thing is this. When we were working with these very unelectrified, very rural, very poor people, not only were we trying to help them in the cooking and lighting, but we started also talking about what you do, what you eat, etc. And I found out that they were eating so poorly, so they were spending a lot of time in medicine. For a poor and a hungry person, the best medicine is good food. It is not medicine. So we suggested that there should be rural restaurants where these poor people should go, show their card, and a subsidized thali will be made available. I was invited by the Gates Foundation in 2012. I presented this work. And after six months, and there was a whole delegation from uh, Tamil Nadu, after six months, Amma's Kitchen started. Naturally, the, the, these people went and told Amma, this is our idea. And from there, the Shiv Bhojan came. And the interesting part is, even today, the Thali is 10 rupees only. And this is what we had shown in our 2012 paper. So, you never know how these ideas can go to what places. The uh, only thing is, is that this, this is being in, uh, for rural poor, uh, in urban areas. My idea was to have this in the rural areas, but it will come. All India release of seven safflower varieties. You know safflower oil? So that comes from our varieties. And uh, so we developed a lot of varieties. Then uh, three sweet sorghum hybrid. In fact, today we are producing syrup. Nobody else in the country produces. And it is a good demand for pharmaceutical and uh, food industry. And so they are taking it. You know, these things take a long time. And unless until you have a genoon, you will just do things like a lot of people do. Project is finished, you write a report, and there's the end of it. We never do that. If we take a project, it continues, and we try to finish it as, as much as possible. In the rickshaw, I never got a single penny from any. After we developed the rickshaw, then I asked for the government to give small grants so that we can expand on this. And when you have that process, where you don't take too much money, but you are interested in developing something, then there's a different mindset as compared to when you have a lot of money and you think that you know you can do something. Then nothing happens. You write reports, and that's the end of it. And that is what I hope you learn, that you need to do something to earn. And the most important thing is a frugal innovation. In less than 15 crores, since 1981, all the work that we have done. Can you believe how 19, oh sorry, 1980, uh, you know, just in 15 crores, 15 crores is peanuts. We did all this work because we didn't have too many big programs, small, small programs, small, small people, but a genuine, we kept on doing things. You do not require too much money to do great research. What you require is a thinking and a focus. And these are a lot of awards. Oops. And we are the only NGO with the two Padmashiris. That's a very rare in uh, India. In fact, the only NGO with two Padmashiris and both in science and engineering. And that came on its own. So this is something that can happen if you do interesting work. This is my book, The Romance of Innovation. I would uh, urge you to read it. The book details all the work we did in renewable energy. But for a huge country like India, we need many more efforts like these to make a tent. This is just one. 
we should have thousands and thousands of such institutions and we need excellent scientists engineers for improving the life of rural population and think about the country there is more to life than simply making money happiness and satisfaction are the most important goals but so this is the most important goal and i would like to get some ideas for internship and engineers the hard work will be very interesting i'm not asking you to spend the rest of your life like i did if you can do that that is even better but it will be wonderful thing to do i also write a lot on spirituality these are my books and uh, my unique thing is you know as an engineer i have always looked at these things also from engineering point of view so what is the difference so i developed this idea of spirituality and technology now 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 lot of these pedal wala type they all talk about spirituality and technology but i have been writing the word is the last 20 22 years more than 200 articles books and i believe that the mantra the new paradigm of development for india should be spirituality plus technology to the happiness and sustainability we need to use high technology but it should be tempered by spirituality because spirituality gives you the puts a upper limit on your greed is a greed which drives people crazy and if you have a limit on your greed then you can use your technology very efficiently my articles have appeared in times of india huffington post everything you know and write extensively reasonably good time management people talk tell me why you how you can do that all of us have enough time if you want to do something otherwise you'll just be doing your sms and nothing on a piece of paper write for 15 20 days one month what you do from morning till evening and you'll be amazed how much time you unnecessarily spend i'm not sending you i'm not telling you that um, you should not do that probably you get satisfaction but i don't know do not know whether it is really a great satisfaction or happiness i get tremendous happiness when i think contemplate and write because new things come out even today i am uh, writing about a very deep process you know people talk about evolution of life after all darwin gave this big thing of evolution everybody talks about evolution but nobody talks about why life in the first place why life came was it necessary and so this is a very deep subject and this is what i am now focusing on how the complexity the space time continuum how it started how it helped and was this an outcome an automatic outcome of this complexity this is very interesting thing everybody talks about evolution but why right so these are the things which gives you a tremendous satisfaction at least it gives me a tremendous satisfaction and one should be all the time so what are the driving forces happiness that is the first driving force whatever you do you should do it for happiness and if you are happy no matter what you do it's up to you then you will live a very decent holistic and fulfilling life spirituality is nothing else but looking deeper into any problem there is no mumbo jumbo there is no religion to it spirituality is just the way the mind works when you look very deeper into anything in fact all the great scientists all the people who have gone for the truth they were all spiritual people einstein fermi everybody they may not talk openly about it but they were all spiritual people because they looked deeper into everything and that is what you should do and that is what i have done all my life powerful mind also helps you get to know solution of problems become only the focus spirituality and genuine gives you internal security removes fear and reduces the greed and working ethically and giving back to society brings happiness you can live you can sleep nicely at night all the time you will think and uh, will not have a very good sleep because if you have screwed somebody and did all sort of gundagardi uh, this will give you a very give one or two percent of your time for society there's hardly any time but just one or two percent every day you can just add up and you'll be surprised and amazed 
and what you can do. And working ethically and giving, so that is the nation building. We'll be delighted to get good few people to run our NGO. So what are the life lessons learned? Create a powerful mind through meditation and spirituality. Helps in developing your own, as we talked about. With thinking about higher things, money becomes secondary. Money never, you know, I, I, I just look at my own life. Your problems, uh, you know, all the time, you know, when I look back now, how when I came back, we both used to go on bicycle. Everybody in our town used to laugh. These guys have come from America and they still are driving bicycle, punctures and stuff. But somehow, you know, just, we never thought, what have, what have we done? Why we are uh, doing, uh, going in this manner? The focus was going to the institute. The focus was going and doing work. Focus was not this passage or path. The focus is the ultimate goal, and you will not go wrong. Never pull others down. This is another lesson. Nature never pulls things down. It branches. It makes the other branch irrelevant. And that is a higher level of development. So if you want to show somebody down, become better than person. And that is the most important thing you should do. Because if you start pulling people down, you get their baggage, you produce your own baggage, and you will never do anything worthwhile in life. So many times when the chips are down, some good things have happened. I cannot explain that. But this is, has always been in my life. Whenever things look a little bleak, something happens. When the niyat intention is good and you do the work sincerely and with clear, clear conscience, things happen in your favor. This is the law of nature. I think this is the law of nature. How? Because opportunities are identified and seized because of the powerful brain. Same opportunities and things may be available to others, but because of your powerful brain, you will seize them. You will find out. And this is why you can take them. I have always flesh felt blessed that there are higher forces who have looked over me, have given me a sense of security and removed fear. And I have always felt that if some these forces I should understand. And that is the reason why I went into spirituality, trying to understand how the world, how the universe functions, what are the forces by which the destiny of human beings are governed. And there is no uh, because they have religion or anything. It is just the process, how nature works, how evolution works. And this is a very amazing uh, thing that you can. And I have done, uh, you can read my writings. And always be grateful to those, to those who have helped you in life. And you can never repay it. Remember that. Repayment, you know, this is a very bad thing that people say, no, I have repaid it. You can never repay because at the time when you somebody helped you, those circumstances are very different. Time does not move in one, uh, another direction. It only goes in one direction. And the complexity makes it a very different thing. So always be grateful. And when you are grateful, then it gives you humility and the ability to learn continuously. And continuous learning and curiosity in any field creates conditions by which flow of life becomes smooth, happy, and purposeful and helps in the evolutionary process of the personal kind and the other kind. And use your IIT education to improve the lives of rural poor through technology. Then only we can make this country great and become a Vishuguru. We talk about Vishuguru, Vishuguru. But Vishuguru is not something in the air. Vishuguru is something that you can make it happen by doing good work for helping the downtrodden. And thank you very much. So this is uh, my all my writings, the journey from IITK to USA and back to India, romance of innovation, untold story of e-rickshaws. It's very interesting. You should read that. Please uh, take this down. Yeah. So, just hold on. Just one second. Before that, I'd, I'd request uh, Mr. Kantesh Balani Dora to say just a few few words of appreciation. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. Fine. Questions. 
no, so, no, so no. hold on, hold on. Just one thing Just is that you can ask all the questions now, and as he said, he's available tomorrow the whole day in VH. So, if you want a deeper discussion, longer discussion, you can also do that. So, maybe in the interest of time, and you can ask probably one, probably one question and have a. So, uh, identify, uh, identify yourself. Uh, sir, I'm Siddharth. Uh, I'm a fourth year undergraduate student and I'm doing a dual degree in civil engineering. Huh? I'm doing a dual degree in civil engineering with a specialization in environment. Okay. Um, so, I'll just stick to two of the most pertinent questions for now. Uh, one, you mentioned you had some offers like from ISC Bangalore, Tata's, and all of these institutions were, I mean, the, from the history that I read about them, they were set up around one person and that person was given the leeway to build whatever they want to do, the research they wish to do. So, why did you want that ownership over your work and not have the muscle power to, you know, maybe even do bigger stuff? That's one question. And well, second, let's, 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 uh, I was just thinking while you were talking, like, you're probably 73 or 74. I can't tell if you were born in 50 or 51. Uh, and this is the first time I'm seeing someone with so much vitality at that age. So, how? First question, when I uh, wanted to come back to India, I visited all these institutions. I went and talked to people who were doing the work and I found there's a lot of politics. Because of my connections, of my knowledge and etc. And I felt that if I want to play that game, and that remains in all institutions, then, then you have to do a lot of that work and not be focused on uh, the work that you're doing. And we can discuss at length because I don't think in the open forum <laughs> I would like to name. The second question, the vitality. A lot of people have told me that. It all comes from that deep thinking, that process. And when you do deep thinking, then you would not like to be lazy. Lazy means that you are all the time thinking about new problems, etc. And that gives you vitality and the youthfulness. And that happens. You become like a vegetable when you stop using, using your brain. Brain is, is always used, even when you take your child or grandchild. But it is the higher quality of thought which gives you that vitality. I've, I've answered both the questions. Both of you. Yeah. Yeah, next. Yeah. First of all, sir, welcome to the campus and it was a pleasure hearing you, you know, you spoke and encapsulated your journey. It is like, you know, I remember <laughs> Ravina Tagore's, you know, famous poem where the mind is without fear and the head is held high. So I can completely resonate that. Uh, I work at the student placement officer. I'm an employee here. I'm an institute employee. And what I have been able to reckon is that you are trying to have interns and full-time, you know, part-time and full-time opportunities. So can we facilitate that through our office? Oh, most welcome. <laughs> I'm always open. Yeah, sir. And I'll be delighted. After all, this is my alma mater. So, but I want people to come with an open mind. And if they think, you know, because I had quite a number of uh, uh, interns and uh, people from IIT Kanpur. They came, they started working. But for example, one person, intern so morning till evening his mother would call five times what why the hell you are there what are you doing mm -hmm. see this pressures you know one of the things that i feel very blessed today actually also happens to be the marriage anniversary of my parents oh. now they're both dead <laughs> the reason why i'm here is because of this. my parents never interfered in my career after i got into iit they said that's it. Sure, my father sometimes would be not be happy with my decision, but I, I didn't care about that. But the thing was that today, there's a tremendous insecurity that the parents bring on their child. And that is not a very healthy thing. Because, you know, after all, the, all the students here, they're not, uh, 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 you know, uh, breast-suckling kids. They're all grown. And they can make their decision. Leave them to that. All the time, the insecurities of the parents, they'll plan everything. This is a very unhealthy thing. And I hope that the students do have the power in them. Just like I said, I never listen to anybody. Have that. 
and do it because everything right from beginning till the end and then you will become the same right from the beginning and the end you will also that so i'll be delighted i'll be really delighted to have you and i'll be very thankful yeah and maybe uh, we can connect on some more aspects sure, sure. later on my email is here and yeah. you're most welcome Sure, I'm looking for. And I'm, I'm, I think I'm also aware about the lecture you recently delivered at IIT Bombay. So prior to this, I was a project manager at IIT Bombay. Okay. So maybe I know a couple of people there whom I think you can also yeah. collaborate. You see, that what happens is that I, I gave the institute lecture last month, two months ago, and there were a lot of students who were really uh, excited. Sitara, the whole Sitara group, the director, the, the chairman, and uh, out of sight, out of mind. I said, please come at least see what is happening. Nobody came. So that is something which is. Uh, anyway, you know, you can take a, a horse to the lake, but you cannot make him drink. Yeah. Other questions? Yeah. So, congratulations again on this marriage anniversary. So, we all oh. wish you. <laughs> well, anyway, are, next question. Are, yeah. They are, they are uh, both uh, gone. Hello, sir. Uh, okay. It was a wonderful session. You know, I liked it a lot. Uh, sir, I wanted to ask in your college days, you know, at that time the courses might have been very, very much difficult and all, and still you managed to you know, read so many books and you know, uh, of course you might have taken care of your health and you know, friends, socialize, socialize and all. How did you manage you know, uh, to do all this in your college time? Like, See, everybody has a time you can do. I was a student leader also. I won the election with the third highest majority, did all sort of Kurapati, but still got enough to get 8.1. One, you have to attend the classes. Most of the times I find the youngsters bunk classes. If you go and attend classes, no matter whether you are attentive or not attentive, something will get into it. And when, see, you should be sincere about yourself. Why have you come here? You should also understand that government of India is really subsidizing your education. It's a very sad thing. Subsidize education, then you leave this country and go abroad to help America, whatever it is. Even today, the, you are nowhere in the world will you get subsidized education as you get in India. And that too, the prime institute. In our times, it was even uh, pittance. In fact, when I entered into IIT Kanpur, there was a time when all the books were made available free because of the United States. All chadars were free. The takia, takia glaf were free. All those were, but very, very soon within a semester, it all vanished. But what I am saying is that the amount of money that the government of India is spending on you, please be sincere about it. So one can really do a lot of things at the same time, in the sense that if you are interested in improving your mind, and when you do that, then anything that you read or do comes with a greater intensity and concentration. But like, even if we try to, like, I try to do a lot of things, not a lot of things, the, the things which I'm interested in, but you no, know, if I try to divide time or do something, you know, one or the other thing, it feels like it's left out or even if I try to do all of things, the quality gets compromised because, or because, not because, doing it properly. Because you have fear. You should not have fear. Whatever you are focusing. I'll give you an example. My father went to jail with Gandhiji. I was born two and a half years after Gandhi, so I never met him. But I met a lot of people who worked with Gandhiji. And I, was, I always feel that if I, he was alive, he is the only person I would have really wanted to meet him. Gandhi had a tremendous focus. So there was one guy, he wanted to meet Gandhi. And he was given two minutes. So all his uh, other people were very surprised. Two minutes, what will Gandhi? So when he came back, they asked him, what, what did happen? He says, in two minutes, I felt that Gandhi's 125% concentration was on my problem. Can you say that about with that any of the politicians today? They will not even focus for one mini microsecond. There's millions of that was the power of Gandhi's mind. Anything that he did was a tremendous power. And when you have the concentration, 
then you can do, you will be amazed, small, small things will add up. This fear that you have, oh no, no, something will be left behind because then you are not focusing on the problem. Okay. Can you also like… Uh, yeah, please, please. So, maybe, some, maybe there are other questions. As I said, he will be here tomorrow. Just like, uh, you said that tomorrow you are free to like to have a conversation. Yeah, sure. sure. So, you Details discuss among it. yourself and decide. Okay. He is staying in VH, so you can go and meet him. Of course, yeah. you know the sensible times to go and meet a person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, question there, in the end. You should give… You should probably example. tell the times when uh, they should come and meet you. Hey, anytime I'm um, uh, around uh, um, 9.30, 10 should be alright. So, 9.30 to let's say 12.30 or something and then again… Let, 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 let us… Anyway, let's see how it goes. Okay. okay. Ah. So, Professor, good evening. So, I have one specific question. So, how much the Gandhian philosophy helped, helped you uh, throughout your journey? I can't hear. What, what is that? Uh, sir, how much the Gandhian philosophy that you have spoken about it, uh, how much it helped you throughout the journey? Can you give some specific example, anything? Yeah, but read my book. You will, you will see some specific examples. Read it. I think you'll enjoy it. Thank you. Okay. So, just uh, one, one, one thing. So, there is a, a um, workshop on semiconductor uh, with uh, so that is from 9.30 to about 12.30. So if people who want to attend that and also meet him, is there some time available after lunch? Uh, after, after, after lunch, I would like to, I take a nap. Hmm. So maybe 3? So yeah, so 3, 3.30 to uh, three? 5, 5.30, whatever. It should be cooler also. And under a tree we can talk. Okay. Sir, so I, I need people. Yeah. This is always has happened in my lectures. People get very excited. They want to talk this, etc. But then something finishes. Sir, despite many people uh, advising you against it, you were confident and you took it on. So, what did you base your confidence on? Because everyone around you were advising to you against it. So, That's what is it based on? Maybe madness. I didn't know. To be really honestly, I didn't know where. What will I do? What what is what is the end? Just madness. I wanted to do something. So, are you satisfied with what you have accomplished? Of course, yes. Of course, yes. Otherwise, I would not come and uh, talk, talk to you. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Okay. Are there Thank any you. more questions? Maybe Professor Balani, do you want to say a few words about him? Because you know him for a long time, it seems. So actually, I just wanted to actually emphasize again, I think its journey has been very inspiring and I also always look forward to hearing him whenever he comes. But I really would say that I think we need to have more attendance. I think what journey I think he has gone through and the lessons he has learned and also is sharing with us. I mean, we really respect his time, but I think at the same time, we should have had a little bit more of sensitizing students to come and attend. Yes, a different thing. He already said that, you know, we can bring a horse to a well, but we cannot force them to drink. But nonetheless, I think whoever are here, I think they have learned a lot and I think your journey definitely will inspire us. We very sincerely thank you and Nandani Madam for being here and I think I hope we learn and I think keep or generate that madness to think, to do things very differently. So thanks a lot for your time and being here and also inspiring us always. Thank you. Thanks.